God does not play favorites. He sees those who struggle with addiction just as valuable as those who don't. That's because we are all made in God's image and God will never disown his creation. Do you believe that God's love for you changes from day to day? Do you think that his love for you is conditional and that it depends on what you do or don't do? Welcome to the Finding Hope and Redemption podcast with Pastor Dennis Siemens from Here About Jesus Ministries. Today, Dennis will encourage you with the truth about God's love for you. Here is Dennis now with today's message entitled, Can't Tell You My Name, I'm Drinking. The verse for today is found in Psalms 147, verse 3. He, Jesus, heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I have spoken with many people over the years who have told me amazing stories of what their lives were like before they struggled with addictions. These were people who struggled with addictions such as drugs, alcohol, gambling, and even pornography. I was saddened to hear about their losses and the toll it took on them. Some people lost beautiful homes with cars on the driveway. Others lost boats and cottages and all of their life savings as well. I had a great career, and because of my addictions, I lost that as well. And now I have nothing. Absolutely nothing is what some of them said. If that wasn't difficult enough for them to bear, most of them lost their spouses, children, parents, brothers and sisters, and even the friends they used to hang around with. With no one there to support them, they found it easy to lose hope and drown out their struggles, hurt and pain with their own addiction. Many believed that they had become total failures and that there was no way to escape from their situation. According to their way of thinking, they were unworthy of anything and unlovable by everyone, even family. Many of them also believed that God had abandoned them or was angry with them and even hated them because of the condition they were in. So being all alone they may have pondered what the future might have held for them. Many of them did not have the inner strength to change their situation. At times, I met people who were so deep into their addiction that they felt that they were not even good enough to talk to me. It was not uncommon for me to walk down a back alley in the early morning and see groups of people standing in a circle drinking their super-sized cans of beer. Empty Listerine bottles that people used to drink from in order to get a cheap high were littered everywhere. Even today, when a person walks down these alleys, he can smell the scent of marijuana wafting from the surrounding buildings. Because there are so many users in the area, these back alley buildings seem to be stained with the ever-present sweet smell of the weed. Often when I walk down the alleyway, I heard desperate people call out my name. Dennis, could you please pray for us? Most of the time, I could not even remember who they were, but was surprised that they even knew my name. One time as I was walking down the alley, I heard a group of four men call out to me and ask for prayer. When I glanced in their direction, I noticed that they were all holding supersized beers and one person quickly tried to hide his when he saw that I was approaching. I first asked them all to tell me their names. One by one, they told me who they were. When it came time for the last person to reveal his name, He told me as he hung his head down in shame, I can't tell you my name. I'm drinking. When I told him my name, however, he quickly found the courage to tell me what his name was. The first thing that they asked me was, Does God hate or not love us because we drink? Absolutely not, I replied. 
He loves you just as much as ever. As a matter of fact, Jesus loves you with an unfailing love that is so great that he wants to help you through all of your struggles. But we have so many problems, so much hurt and pain, one of them answered. I replied by saying, God understands what you're going through and is with you all the time. That's because God is everywhere. As I stood around and chatted with them, I asked if we could all pray together. Then an amazing thing happened. The men formed a huddle, and then we all placed our arms around each other's shoulders. I then asked God to bring healing and forgiveness into their lives, the kind of healing that is needed for those who are living on the edge in terrible desperation. I am so glad that God does not look down at anyone. God does not play favorites. He sees those who struggle with addiction just as valuable as those who don't. That's because we are all made in God's image, and God will never disown his creation. He loves us all the same, whether we are addicted or not, whether we are rich or poor, whether we feel that we are outcasts or not. God never looks down on us in spite of the desperate condition that he finds us in. He never says, oh, your life is so desperate, I will not be able to help you. I'd rather help someone else. God says that he is able to bring hope to everyone regardless of their situation. What an amazing God we serve. In John 3.17, the Bible says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There are two things that are impossible for God to do, which for some is difficult to believe. The first one is that it is impossible for God to sin. God cannot sin. If he did, he would not be God. The Bible even says that God the Father is so holy that it is impossible for him to even look at sin. As a matter of fact, God hates sin. Because God cannot sin, he can never do anything to harm us. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. God loves everyone and hates the sin because of how sin destroys our lives. He wants to help us through our struggles so we do not have to live with the effects that sin causes in our lives. The second one is that it is impossible for God to love us more than he does right now. His love for us is not like a thermometer. His love never changes. There is never a moment in time when he loves us less. There is never a moment that he rejects us and turns his back on us. Even when we sin, God loves us the same as when we were first created. Even though it is true that our sin separates us from God, The gentle Holy Spirit keeps calling us back into a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 5 verse 8, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This verse says that Jesus died for everyone. Those who say that they have had a good life, and even those whose lives were filled with addictions and hardships. God loves everyone regardless of their circumstances and desires for everyone to come into a relationship with him. Even though we are all unworthy because of the wrong things we do, we all become worthy by believing that Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross in order to set us free from sin and the consequences of it. By faith, we need to ask God to forgive us and set us free. 
and indeed he will do so. In Psalm 103, verses 11 to 12, the Bible says, For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy, some translations say love, towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions or sin from us. If we ever see someone who is struggling with an addiction, by God's grace, we are now able to help them, knowing that the same God who forgave us is able to deliver and bring hope and faith to people who are living on the edge. My heart is filled with great joy because of God's unfailing love, a love that is infinite and endless, that loves me through my faults and difficulties instead of growing cold. You've been listening to Finding Hope and Redemption with Pastor Dennis Siemens, presented by Hear About Jesus Ministries. We pray that these podcasts will help build up your faith in Jesus Christ. For further information about our ministry or our podcasts, or if you would like to share a prayer request, We'd love to hear from you. Please email us at findinghopeandredemption at gmail.com. I'm Darren Siemens inviting you to join us next time for Finding Hope and Redemption.